Thank you for joining us for our financial results for the half year ended December 31, 2019. Before we get started, I'd like to talk about our safety performance. For us, there is nothing more important than ensuring everyone goes home safe and well at the end of every shift. During the half, we reduced our total recordable injury frequency and employee occupational illness rates as we continue to work on building a strong culture of care and accountability. We also made progress on our diversity targets, with women now representing 19% of our workforce, 40% of our lead team, and 38% of our board. Moving to our financial results, volatile markets led to a 21% reduction in the average realised prices for our key commodities. And we reported underlying EBITDA of US $678 million. Free cash flow from operations was US $284 million. And we entered the half with a net cash balance of US $277 million. Irrespective of the external environment, we remain focused on sustainably improving our operational performance, both in terms of production and costs. We increased output at Worsley Illumina, where we continue to invest to improve calciner availability and had record production at Brazil Illumina. At the majority of our operations, production is either on track or ahead of plan for the year. At South Africa Energy Coal, we have lowered production guidance to the bottom end of our range in response to challenging market conditions. At our South Africa manganese operations, we curbed higher cost trucking in response to lower prices, which we continue to monitor. Weaker steel and alloy demand in the December half led to higher cost production exiting the market. At the end of the half year, we saw manganese ore prices recover from their lows with customers restocking from seaborne supplies. In the first half, unit costs were lower at the majority of our operations, supported by a broad appreciation of the US dollar and our strong operating performance. We expect to realise further benefits from our initiatives in labour, energy and materials usage across the second half and have lowered our 2020 financial unit cost guidance for all our operations aside from South Africa and Energy Coal. Looking ahead, we continue to reshape and improve our portfolio. We entered into a binding conditional agreement for the sale of our shareholding in South Africa Energy Coal and expect to complete that transaction by the end of the calendar year, subject to meeting a number of material conditions. The review of our manganese alloy business progressed and we continue to assess options for both smelters, including divestment, care and maintenance, or closure. As part of our focus on adding growth options through the drill bit, we continue to invest in exploration. We have more than 20 exploration options in partnership with junior companies. Focused on base metals in favourable jurisdictions, we plan to spend US $30 million in the 2020 financial year advancing and cycling these options and ultimately bringing more development options into our portfolio. We exercise our option to form the Ambler Metals Joint Venture, funding the investment from cash on hand. This project includes a high-grade polymetallic Arctic deposit and the Bornite copper deposit alongside an attractive regional exploration holding in Alaska. The Arctic deposit has a Jork mineral resource estimate of 37 million tonnes containing 3% copper and 4.3% zinc, as well as lead, silver and gold. A pre-feasibility study for Arctic is underway while we continue to explore both Bornite and the broader land package. In Arizona, at our high-grade Hermosa project, Work continues on a pre-feasibility study, which is due in the June 2020 half year. The initial jork resource for the Taylor deposit at Hamosa has increased our confidence in the project, while initial jork resource for the Clark deposit is also expected in the 2020 calendar year. We have identified 15 new exploration targets in the highly prospective land package and will continue to test them this year. We remain committed to a strong balance sheet and retaining flexibility through the cycle. 
our capital management framework is unchanged. And reflecting our strong financial position, positive outlook for our business and discipline approach, we resolved to pay a fully frank interim dividend of US $54 million and a special dividend of US $54 million. This takes total returns to shareholders, including our on-market buyback, to US $300 million in respect of the half. We also increase the size of our capital management program by US $180 million to US $1.43 billion, leaving US $198 million expected to be returned following payment of the special dividend. We're focusing on sustainably improving our operating performance and reshaping our portfolio underpinned by a strong balance sheet and capital discipline that together will create value for shareholders of South 32. Thank you.